live. Is this thing on? There we go. All right, quick question before we start going. Um, how many people in this industry less than a year? Any rookies? Ah, a couple of you guys, you have a chance to leave. <laughs> this industry is very, very strong in holding people in it. How about one to five years? Five to 10 years? 10 to 15 years? I know it's after lunch and the hands weigh about 150 pounds at this moment. <laughs> Uh, 15 to 25 years. Anybody more than 25 years in this? Did any of you guys vote in the Roosevelt election? <laughs> Not quite that long. What I'm going to talk about is uh, first, before we get into the audit, I hate to do this to you, but a little side note. In your bag, we provided you with two very important tools. In my section of the notebook, I have two handouts for you. Didn't know where the best place to put them, so we put them there. Why not? One, on the voltmeter, there's a voltmeter in the bag. I'd rather you not play with it to avoid getting hurt. Read the instructions. I'm not necessarily the finest literist out there. That's why I'm in irrigation. But uh, it does help you so you can quickly take a voltage check on the clocks when you're out there working on them and to do an ohm check to see what's going on with the solenoid wires, the field wiring, because that's the common issues out there. It doesn't work. What happened? The voltmeter will help you a lot with that. The other piece of paper in there is the pressure gauge. The pressure gauge in that bag is a great tool for what we're going to do in just a few moments and look at an audit. It comes in two setups. I put it all together for you in the bag. This is the way you would use it to check a Toro head. If you look on your diagram though, the first one, if you're going to use an Aerotrol, Rainbird or Hunter, you would have to take it apart down to just the bare T to make it fit on the rainbird head. So there is a little bit difference there. I just wanted to make you aware of it. Those, those uh, tools, if you will, are yours to keep. So, and you're very welcome. Now, thank you, Rusty. What is an audit? What are we gonna talk about? So far, we've talked a lot today about efficiency and irrigation systems. And what the old mantra or mantra has been for all these years is, hey, I got a brown spot, I, obviously I'm not watering it enough. And I can tell you that was the, the philosophy for years. Well, that doesn't work anymore. Now we need to pay attention to our system. We want you to go out and take a quick look at your yard. How many people have actually turned their own system on and looked at it within the past two weeks? I like this group. I rarely get that many hands, <laughs> this is good. It took me about three weeks to realize the pain on the eaves of my house was coming off because I had a broken sprinkler head. That's what you get with teenage boys mowing the lawn at home. Do they tell dad they had a problem? No, of course not. Surprised me, didn't you? <laughs> All right, thanks. Now, so the purpose of an audit is for you to do a visual inspection of what's going on in your yard. Do you have to do the audit of the whole property? Probably not. You want to do an audit of the system that has the most glaring issues with it. Audit is not a witch hunt though a lot of people use it as such. An audit is to give you ideas of what you can do to improve your system. Maybe the heads are not nozzled properly. Maybe you got a whole bunch of free sprinkler heads by somebody wanting you to try them out and you put them all on the one zone. So you have every manufacturer's on one sprinkler zone. Not necessarily the best way to go about putting in an irrigation system. So the audit will help you identify areas for improvement. I don't have time because the auditing class takes a, usually about a day and a half to go through. So all I wanted to talk about is what we get from it and what we can utilize. First thing, an inspection. Walk the property. Look at what's out there. Do you have broken heads, tilt crooked heads? Are the heads too deep? Are the seals going bad? As much as the peel, those seals will never go bad, they can go bad. Little sand in there, they'll go bad. They are designed to be replaced for a reason. Valves, they can leak. That's one of the calls I get the most here at this company is, Craig, my sprinkler heads are leaking. Perfect. They're supposed to leak. They make them half quarter full circle leaks. That's all they are. But Craig, you don't understand. They leak all the time. I go, well, that's not the sprinkler head. That's probably the valve. So th it's the things that we have to look at, the little things. High pressure. We've talked about that today quite a bit. Tilted spray deflection. That means something actually grew when some of the time they put the things in. I've seen that a lot. Uh, it was just out in Virginia at a water symposium with the IA. And I do not understand this one, but they put a nice one inch rotor 
on a plot of land that was about two foot wide of turf, a three foot high wall, and lovely flowers in there. And I'm going, what came first, the sprinkler or the wall? Don't know who came with it. And down in a, down at a buddy's house down in um, southern San Diego area, there was a sprinkler head a foot from a big, huge concrete drinking fountain. Nice job. 15-foot nozzle on there, by the way. Beautiful. <laughs> and my favorite was the one I saw about a year ago. Backyard. Guy's patio. 20 by 30-foot patio. Beautiful. The entire sprinkler zone was still in the patio and operative. The reason I knew that? Because it was green around the heads. I go, well, did you think of turning it off? He goes, no, it keeps the patio clean. <laughs> so there is a lot of waste out there. So the site inspection goes a long way to help you. Then comes the actual audit. Different kinds of cups. And I have some examples out there. Many companies make cups. This one's from the University of Utah. It's got a neat little stand on it. It's actually done in inches. The one that's been out there about the longest is the one from Cal Poly at San Luis Obispo. Looks like a nice martini glass. Don't get any ideas when you're doing the audit, mind you. But it has the lines on it. There's a metal wicket that it sits in. Very convenient. There are different types. My favorite is the more economical one, which works very well, by the way. It doesn't matter what you use. They all have to be the same size on the, on the audit. You can take it, pour it into the cup, and you know what it did. The larger the mouth, the high walls, the quicker your test can be. You got large one inch rotors, uh, sports, golf, the larger buckets work better for you than the small martini glasses. So it doesn't really matter what you use, but as you see, they need to, well, I like that one, it's a little crooked. The key is you'll see I have two different zones laid out outside there, one with the martini cups and one with the buckets. And we're gonna look at them and I'll talk about them when we get out there and explain some of the differences and some of the principles you wanna go through when you do that. Once you do the cups, you want to record the data from the cups. Looking at them, you can get a pretty good idea what, the, what you're getting in the cups as you go, but you usually want to write down the data on some form or one way or another. You also want to check the pressure, hence the gauges in your kit. I have one out there to show you how we use it. I also have, for those that have rotors on the property, we have a large rotor right out there, and I got a beautiful pitot tube that you can use to check the pressure. Anybody use a pitot tube before? Anyone do it without getting wet? You will get wet. Well, hey, that's our industry. You don't like getting wet, you gotta think about flipping burgers because you're gonna get wet in this industry. Record the wind speed, we won't be doing that today. Check the spacing, and we wanna look through and see what the, is getting into the cups. We average 25 milliliters, you'll see that out there. Catchments, that's what we are talking about, these devices here. 12 catchments is just a good guideline. When you do an audit, we ask that you use a minimum of 25, and it is a best advantage to use a multiple of four. Because one of the formulas I'll talk about here in just a second is the lowest quarter, or lowest 25%. If you do it in a multiple of six, it's hard to come up with a lowest 25%, unless you do some of that fuzzy back east math. So, multiples of four work real well. Now, when you lay the catchments out there, they will collect water once you've run the system. Spray heads, roughly five minutes. Rotors, you want to do about 15 minutes on them. So you have measurable water in the cups. How does this look? Efficient, inefficient. Room for improvement. For us contractors in the bunch, opportunity for more work. Because last time I checked, we really aren't in this for nonprofit. We are supposed to be able to help people. Once you take the cups, you line them up, you measure what's in them, write it down on that sheet I was talking about. So, when you get the data, we had 12 cups. You want to line up what the data it is you got. Divide it by 12. You have 141 milliliters total. Divided by 12, and uh, come on, math. It needs a little bit more Red Bull. And our average here is 11.8 milliliters on the whole area. Next step, you want to go through it and find out what the lowest quarter is. With 12 cups, what's the lowest quarter? Lowest 25% of 12. There is a calculator on your cell phones. My kid showed it to me. I don't know how to get to it, but it's there. We're looking at roughly, if we take all the data and line it up, we'll see two of them at five. We see two at seven. Basically, three cups will be my lowest quarter. 
You take those three, divide it by three, and it, eventually this will come up with my lowest quarter. Come on, baby. Start all over. There we are. Lay them out. So our average is 5.7 milliliters. I take that, divide it by the average overall, and I get a 0.483 or 48% efficient. So those that you said that didn't look so good, just under 50% efficient, which oddly enough is about standard for spray head irrigation. That's not very good. So we do show signs of waste there. Now, due to the drought, more and more organizations, the Irrigation Association is looking at utilizing the distribution uniformity of the lowest half. Because if we water to the lowest quarter, I'm compensating 75% of it for the lowest 25%. So what does that mean? I'm going to overwater 25% or 75% to make up for the lowest 25%, which is not necessarily the right thing to do. We should be looking at it as a management principle of trying to help conserve. Maybe the lowest half would be a better way to go about doing it. We take the lowest half, we take six cups and take the numbers out. Now we jump from five to seven. Look at our efficiency, whoops, compare the two, 63.6 to 48.3. What does that number mean when you do the audit? It goes into coming up with a base schedule. 48% efficient, I'm going to need more run time to make up for it. 68%, I won't need as much. Will the turf die? No. Will I stress it a bit? Yes, but when? The hottest months of the year. So that's the key piece. We want to follow the weather pattern. So, and you put it on a graph, the same thing. You see that it, a lot of water on the left, very little water penetrating the soil. But the thing you want to look at is how does it compare? Good uniformity to poor uniformity? I've got waste, I've got excess. I'm either deficit watering in a lot of it or overwatering in the other part. That's, that's a good example of what happens. So, water audits. We're going to go outside and look at them. To do so, I'm going to need you to grab your name badge again and we're going to look at your badge for the A's, the B's and the C's. Since there is a gross amount of you here, I would love to be able to chat with you all easily. I do have teenage boys at home as my bio says and I learned, learned real quick how to talk loud. With boys you have to. But we're going to break you into those three groups, A's, B's and C's. I have two partners in the back of the room, Oh, left and in the back, Jeff Miller. Over there he's going to take the A group and it's going to take you over to sprinklers and rotors to give you a chance to look at them, adjust and play with them, compare and see what you got for adjusting them from the audit. And then I got Peter in the back. Wave hello to Peter. He'll take the group B. He's going down to where we have an example of drip irrigation, subsurface, micro, drip tubing, uh, filtration and that sort of thing. And then I'll take the last bunch and we're going to gather right outside the door here and we're going to do like 10 minutes, uh, well about six and a half minutes per group trying to get kept back on schedule. So, and I know this is the time of day where that food coma takes over. So we felt that this was important to stand up, get a little blood pumping, and go outside and frolic with some water. All right, any questions before we mosey out? None? All right, A's with Jeff. Peter, come on up front here. <laughs>